This is going to be Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to talk about the subject, Do You Acknowledge God's Existence? In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So, if you do acknowledge God, then you have a healthy fear of God's power. If you know the true God exists, then you know how powerful he is. This should cause you to fear him. In verse 7 and 8 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. So if you depart from evil, then this shows you understand the power of God, at least a little bit. This shows you realize that there is an almighty and holy God that can kill you or let you live any time. Job 28, 28 says, And unto man, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And that's what it said in verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Proverbs 16, 6 says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Are you departing from evil, or are you going on and doing something wrong, even though you already know it's wrong. That shows that you don't fear God like you should. If you know what God is capable of, and you're acknowledging God's existence on every single decision that you make, if you're acknowledging that God is capable of killing you or chastening you, then you're going to fear Him, and that shows that you're acknowledging Him. You should fear God... Because it's a healthy fear. It's healthy to fear God. It's good for your health. <clears throat> be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. Did you know that all God would have to do to get you on your knees begging for mercy, I don't care how tough you are, all he's got to do is put a tiny little stomach bug inside of you. And you're going to be in front of the toilet begging God for mercy. It wouldn't take much for God to just kill you. It wouldn't take much for us to be sick, laying in bed, and unable to move. Fearing God is a healthy fear. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. If you fear God, then you're going to stay away from wicked things that will just end up putting you in bad health. God says to have one woman, and then a man gets multiple women. Then a man gets an STD. He didn't fear God, now he's sick. God says don't drink alcohol. Man drinks alcohol. Now he has wounds without cause. Now he's been in car wrecks. Now he's been in bar fights. Now he's ruined his liver. Now he has a beer gut. If you fear God, you'll depart from evil and you'll be healthy. A man that doesn't fear God will wallow in his own misery and this will make him sick. Proverbs 17, 22, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. If you remember your Creator in the days of your youth, as Solomon says to do in, in Ecclesiastes, you'll be more healthy and you're going to add days to your life. Depart from evil. Fear God. These things will make you healthy. Acknowledge God's existence before you make a decision. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. If you want to know peace, then getting saved and living right is the only way. Each person has a God-sized hole in their heart that only God can fill. After you get saved, there will be another hole that only fellowship with Jesus Christ can fill. Getting saved and living right are the only ways to have peace. You have to acknowledge God. It says, Let thine heart keep my commandments. Now this is Solomon talking to Rehoboam, his son, but we can look at it as God talking to us. And it's, so it says, let thine heart keep my commandments. So it's more than just abstaining from an act. It's abstaining from having thoughts of the act because it says, let thine heart keep my commandments. Jesus said in Matthew five twenty eight, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath already committed adultery with her in his heart. Let thine heart keep my commandments. You can be sinning in your heart and not commit the act outwardly. However, if you keep sinning in your heart, then when the opportunity presents itself to do the act outwardly, you'll do it. 
because you've thought about it so many times. It's a process of evil thinking. You start out thinking bad, then the opportunity presents itself, and then you go ahead and do it because you've thought about it so much. Proverbs 3.3, 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. If you have mercy and truth on your mind, if you have them about your neck, written on your heart, then you'll be less likely to fall into sin. Verse 4, shalt thou, So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Proverbs 16, 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. And that verse, verse 4 said you're, you'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. If you follow the Lord and what he says, the world is not going to like you. They will be your enemy. But the Lord somehow works it out many times that you will find favor in the sight of men, even your enemies. Consider Daniel, he earned the favor of men who weren't believers. Consider Joseph, who earned the favor of Pharaoh. You know, look at these examples of people. Even though they were for God and they were against the world, worldly men ended up respecting them. So if you acknowledge God then you know He's your roadmap. That's the next the next thing. If you acknowledge God, then you realize God is your roadmap. He's your GPS. It says in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. So when you approach any given situation, many times you will lean towards what you want instead of what the Lord wants. You need to lean unto Him. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So you're not going to understand everything that he does or why he lets things happen. You just got to do what you know to be right. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's because he's your roadmap. If you're fearing God, then you're not fearing man. If you're fearing man, then you're not living right. If you're not living right then you forgot your roadmap. You forgot your map. You forgot to charge your GPS. God is your guide. And without Him, you'll leave the paths of uprightness. So in all your ways, acknowledge Him. God wants to be a part of every part of your life. Your job, your marriage, your parenting, even all the things they may that may not be spiritual things in your life. He wants to be a part of those things. It says, In all thy ways acknowledge him. <coughs> and anything that's not spiritual things, you need to turn them into spiritual things just by doing them for the glory of God. Hebrews 12, 3 says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. How much do you consider him? How much do you acknowledge Him in all thy ways? Acknowledge Him. Have you ever heard someone say that someone didn't even acknowledge their existence? That's exactly how people are with God. They don't even acknowledge His existence. Every decision they make, everything that they do in their life, it's like God doesn't even exist. When you watch a movie or a TV show, the people on the show or the movie, it's as if God doesn't even exist. And that's the way people act. When you're in trouble and you don't acknowledge God, it is worse than being lost and having a fully functioning GPS in the seat next to you turned off. When you are in trouble and you don't acknowledge Him, you don't consider Him, it's like not charging your GPS and just laying it there or having it fully charged and just not even turning it on. You have something to direct your past. However, many Christians don't acknowledge His existence. And one of the first things you learn in theology is the existence of God Himself. A Christian isn't an atheist. He knows God exists. He is just an atheist in practice. He lives his life as if God isn't even a part of it. It's very sad. But if you acknowledge Him, then you know He is the one who is your roadmap. You know He is the one you should fear. And you know He's the one who takes care of you. If you're acknowledging God, then... Everything you have that's good, that, that's around you, you know that, sh that came from God. It says in Matthew 5.45, 
For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Do you ever sit back and acknowledge that the reason that your barns are filled with plenty and your car has gas and your house has heat and your fridge has food is because God is the one who takes care of you. Everything good, your health, the fact that you got up and was able to go to work, the fact that you have a family. Honor the Lord with what he has already given you. It says, Thy presses shall burst out with new wine. This shows that not all wine in the Bible is alcoholic wine because if the press is burst with new wine, then that shows new wine is just grape juice. It's not going to be fermented when it comes off the presses. Isaiah 65, 8 goes along with this and says new wine is found in the cluster, the cluster of grapes, showing you that new wine is just grape juice. So not every, every time the Bible says wine, it doesn't always mean alcoholic wine. So acknowledge the Lord. Realize that He is the reason that you walk out and you look up and you see the blue sky and the sun and it's nice outside and it's not just a hurricane coming on you every day. He is the reason that you come home and there's food on the table. And if you acknowledge the Lord, then you'll realize that He chastens His children. This will cause you to be fearful of Him and live right. So are you acknowledging the Lord? If you are, then you realize he will chasten you for being bad, for doing bad things as a Christian, for sinning, because he chastens his children. It says in Proverbs 3.11, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. So if the Lord chastens you, then you should realize he's doing it because you're a son of God and that he loves you. In Hebrews 12.5-8, it explains this very well. It says, and, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, Then are you bastards and not sons. So don't despise the chastening of the Lord. And don't faint when you're chastening the Lord. Let it be a learning experience. Let it show you that you need to turn around and do right. Because that's why he's doing it. He wants you to turn around and start doing right. And it's it's a scary time if God just lets you just... Go your own way and do your own thing without correcting you. That's the position that you don't want to be in. Proverbs 3.12 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Correction, many times people see as a bad thing. They think they're above correction. and They don't want to be corrected. But by someone correcting you and you changing whatever you're doing wrong, this can only make you wiser and and smarter and live longer if god didn't chasten you then you might continue in your sin until it kills you and ruins your life it can ruin your testimony and the life of others it can bring shame to your name and the name of jesus christ if you continue in sin as a christian if you go around saying you're a christian and you continue in sin you can bring shame to the name of christianity But this has just been a quick study on Proverbs chapter 3 about do you acknowledge God's existence? Are you acknowledging God in every decision you make? Is He what you think about when you wake up in the morning? Are you thinking about God in the Bible? Or are you thinking about video games or movies or TV shows? When you get home from work, are you thinking about sitting down and watching movies? Or are you thinking about spiritual things when you go lay your head down the bed at night are you thinking about prayer or are you binge watching your favorite netflix show is does your life revolve around entertainment or does it revolve around god and his word do you acknowledge god's existence 
do you even bring up God in conversation or make anybody think about God? That's a question you really need to ask yourself.